So your therapist says you can't tell us about what's going on in there anymore? Oh. Well, yeah, I mean, you know what? Look, he makes a good point. He's saying, look, we have this thing going on, and when I start talking about it on the air, making jokes about it, my problem is them it it diminishes what I'm doing in there. Oh, please. Well, whatever, Robin. No, You're no, such no. a Let me psychotherapist. I'm not going to listen to you. You <laughs> could be honest about your feelings here and there, couldn't you? Look, I got real problems being honest about my feelings with myself, let alone with you. I'm so, just saying, if you joke about it here, why does it have to have some effect there? Because it does. Or I diminish not. everything. I diminish every relationship in my life. I make jokes about everything. So one time I'm going to be a little private. What do you want to know? I'll tell you. Oh, oh, wait a minute. What, what do you want to know? One second you're not telling in the next minute. What do you think you're going to learn? You know everything about me. You know I'm crazy. <laughs> well, I just don't know how. how much. You, you could, know. You can hide it from me. See, I think you're hiding a lot. I have problems. I didn't know you were crying in your sleep. That's been happening within the last couple of weeks, yeah. Really? Yeah. I don't know what to make of it. I mean, I do. You Do you wake up upset? Yes. I've never had a pleasant dream in my life. Really? That's right. It's always a nightmare, and it's always involving cold rain. It's always involving me on my knees and uh, 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 begging to come out of the rain. Okay? <laughs> now, now you know something. <laughs> and, I, and then lately, I've been crying in my sleep. Wow. Jeez. Sobbing. And, and the screaming and kicking and... I don't know what that is. I mean, is it every night, all night? No. No. Okay. Wow. You think it's from Nam? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> I think it's from Otto and George. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think Otto is still uh, very upset. I don't know, man. That guy's... He's an interesting I guy. I like the guy, and I don't know what's going on with him. That was like a major meltdown. Oh, it's crazy. That was a crazy segment. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, from one end to the other, nothing but nuts around here. <laughs> the guests, the guests are nuts. Wait, you think anybody <laughs> normal would have had my life <laughs> and my career? Oh, dear. Let's be honest. Yeah, but I mean, you know, some people can just have fun, can't they? Yeah, but obviously not me. Yeah. I think uh, that, that, to me, was more interesting than any comedian ever was on The Tonight Show. That's that true. segment he just <laughs> But my He was thing, ready to burn the puppet. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was ready to get rid of that puppet and go into another career. Yeah, like, like sell stuff. <laughs> yeah, the first time he said Home Depot, I thought he was going to take a job there. Yeah, well. you're right. I don't deserve this. You're right. I'll leave. <laughs> but my point to you is that here you are. You have everything. You know, if a, a large group of people looking at your life mm -hmm. would say, there's a guy with everything. No, I don't have everything. And what I don't have is the ability to be close to people and stay close to people. Oh. So, that's there you go. So, don't ugh if I tell that's, you something. That's so simple. It's hard to get money. It's hard. Am I close to you? Huh? Am I close to you? I'm close to you. You're not close right. to me. Right. So, you know what I'm talking about. You know that I, that I have uh, issues. So, what are you talking about? You think that's pleasant for me? <laughs> think it's pleasant to be alone? Uh, uh, well, it was pleasant to be to be completely alone but and not let anyone in. We're all alone, Howard. Okay, all right, whatever. <laughs> no, so you're not I'm understanding. Simply saying that. But you think it's you weird that you and I have worked together for twenty years and you don't know me? This behavior, I know you. Well, yeah, you think it's weird that I that I come on, you, you come on. Do you want to get into this? Yes. All right. So yes. do you think it's weird that I'm not close? I think that's that's your behavior. Okay. That's well, what does, you have decided me. to do. And I you can decide now to change that if you wanted to. That's not true. Oh, absolutely. It is true. No. It's not true. You don't just Why change because you want to change. Why is it that you think you're not close? Don't, do, don't, don't be my psychiatrist. I'm just asking you a question. You said I can ask questions. You said to me a few minutes ago, you, don't, you know me, but I don't know you. Yes, I make an effort to know you. So there you go. Well, I should I should make an effort too. You can if you want to. Oh, please leave me alone. <laughs> you, can't, you can't just do things because you want to. Uh, how how else? Let do you me do alone. Them? You were yeah, just telling alone. Artie if be, he really you? wanted to lose weight, he could do it. Yeah, that's different. Oh, that's different. That's a physical or a mental thing. That's well with you, right? 
See, I can get you to lose weight by controlling the amount of food you eat every day. So that's easy. Right, exactly. That's a physical thing I can control. Right. You can't yeah. control somebody's emotions. Which is why it's easier than Where what you're dealing with. Where do they come from? They come from the same place as everything else. Uh, please. You don't know anything about this. I do know exactly about this. No. If you decided you wanted to be close to people, if you wanted to make the effort, no. but for some reason or other, you find that it's not worthwhile. No, it's got to be genuine. You don't know anything about it. Chauncey, you're on the yeah, I don't want to discuss genuine. therapy with you. You don't you don't you don't know if what I'm talking about. If you went went about it in a genuine manner, it would be genuine. Okay. That's, that makes no sense. Chauncey, Absolutely. go ahead. I'm genuinely yeah. going to make an effort to like people, to get to know people. I would I think it's obvious what you're going through. There was a report on news the other night about male menopause and yeah. <laughs> what? which are mainly crying in your sleep between the ages of 45 and 50. Really? Yes. Get out of here. <laughs> you You're not going right through any man What? You fall right into that group. And what about bad tattoos? <laughs> <laughs> That's called a uh, midlife crisis. Yeah. Have That's impossible. That? I still menstruate. Oh. <laughs> I dreamt I was you, Chauncey. That's why I started crying. You would kill yourself then. How's your hair plugs? <laughs> That's going to be it from now on, huh? <laughs> I liked it better when you made fun of my back. I like Chauncey. Uh, I got to go. You're Bye. close to Chauncey? Yeah. Chauncey's the guy I'm close with. <laughs> Get Chauncey right off the phone with that so hair plugs So why are you close to me? Uh -huh. See, this is all about you. No, I'm just asking. You're the one who brought that up. I wasn't even talking about that. Because I'm not close to anybody. And you say that, but that's not true. You don't know what's true. You're close to your children. That's true. See? All right. Here we go. Here's Ryan. Uh, Ryan, you're on the air. Good morning, Howard. It's Ryan from Cleveland. Hey, Ryan. Wham, 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 you big pussy. All you... I swear to God, you're She's not... She's bothering me about it. I'm not... You, you know, you guys hey, are crazy. I'm no sitting pussy, here saying I'm in... Here. Now get you're, out of here, my pussy. Come pussy, down here and let me in, whack you over the head with my pussy You're infatuated body. with homos. You can't get in touch I'm with your fine. inner self. Wait, wait, wait. Problems, problems, oh, problems. problems you big pussy. Bitch. Yeah, I'm a pussy. Let me see you walk into a psychiatrist's office and confront your problems, you fag. I can, I can I, confront my problems, but you're still a pussy. No, you can't. You got, you got I guarantee you, you don't even know what your problems are. You, you don't even know your problems, Howard. And I guarantee you. And I guarantee, you, and you, I guarantee you. Money. I didn't say. Money. Yeah, everything's money in this world, right? No, 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 no. That's all tons I'm of money. I worked my ass off. I ripped Van Winkle for twenty years. I haven't even woken up. That's all I did was work. How do you think I made money? Well, I understand that, but you, you're you're funny. My marriage is over. What do you think was going on? I'm busy working like a dope. Well, you should have paid attention to your wife. And started Shut talking up. About homos and Shut strippers. up. Homos you, and fat. All the time. you don't even. I'm where's your fat. life at? Where do you, where's the women you're banging? Uh, believe me, I'm Yeah, you're just sitting fine, banging your when fist. You're si hey, when you're sitting on the radio talking about homos all day and, and rapping with that idiot stuttering John all day. Uh, be, be quiet. And you're listening. Your Who's the homo? You're the one sitting glued to it. Glued Stupid to it. ass. He's sitting. He's sitting glued to my problems. You're the pussy. If you half a, if you weren't half a fag, you'd turn the radio off and go live your own life. You wounded freak. Sitting there talking, talking about my problem. You're listening to my problems <laughs> for four and a half straight hours. You're right. that guy listening. Oh dear. You goddamn douche. <laughs> it's getting to be re goddamn ridiculous. <laughs> And I don't want to talk about my oh. And I don't want to talk about my problems. <laughs> Damn. Oh, Period. Pow. F you. I got all kind of issues. Anger issue. But I'm working on it. All right. We start brave enough to work on it. Well, where's this work getting you? You're still screaming. I can't be close. Uh, uh, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm coming close. Don't worry about it. What? That's right. What? Don't worry about my problems. That's what I'm saying. I have problems. I admit it. Oh, dear. I don't say I'm normal. That's all. And I ain't complaining about my life. Everyone goes, oh, your life's fine. You have a lot of money. But, you know, I, I, it's, forget about the money. But everybody is struggling in life. Of course. To get somewhere so they can enjoy themselves. Here you are. You're at that place and you're not enjoying yourself. How do you know what I'm doing? Well, you keep saying you're not. I'm miserable. I've been having a hard time. I got to go four days a week. No, I have issues I want to work on. 
I'm enjoying it. All of you are very threatened by my th- therapy. <laughs> all of you. Because you all know you're disgusting in there. I'm for one. Year. I'm happy you heard it. Yeah. I'm threatened? Yep. It never had occurred to me. That's right. It had never occurred to me that I should be threatened. And I don't want to talk about my therapy. Yeah, go ahead, Tony. You're on the air. Howard, this is, I'm a big fan, but this is all an excuse. Because in about a year, you're going to announce you're going to marry Beth, and this has all been justified over the past year. Huh? You're telling you can't get close to people. Uh, you Let me tell you people. something. Let me tell you about Beth. Beth and I are having a great time. I ain't whining about anything. I got a good life. I got great kids. I got a great girlfriend. And she's going to want great kids from you soon, too. No. Mark my she word. Doesn't. You don't even know her. What do you know about her? I don't want to know her. I don't want to know her. Yeah, but so what are you saying? My my girlfriend wants to have kids. You don't even no, know what her issues saying, are. You're, you're setting this all up. So in a year from now, when you get out of here, I could admit, listen, if I want to get married to Beth, I'll marry Beth. I don't want to be married ever again, and I don't want to live with someone ever again. Yeah, you don't want to be married ever again because you can't get close to people now, but in a year, once you're cured, you'll say, oh, I can get close to people. And so I'm cured. Beth. I'm not going to be cured of anything. I am me. I am just going to a psychiatrist so that I can feel better about certain issues in my life. That's all. Who doesn't have it? Pussy? You guys are nuts. You guys are all freaking out on me. What guys? This guy on the phone. I'm freaking out. I'm a big fan. You're saying I'm going to get married when I don't want to be married. You're telling me Beth wants to have kids when you don't even know her. What are you talking about? Beth doesn't want to have kids. (laughs) And if she changes her mind, she should go have kids. We've discussed it a million times. This seems to me you're crying an awful lot about it, you know. I'm not crying about anything. Robin asked me. I look at it, you got a pretty good life, it seems to me. Well, who said I don't? Uh, You are, apparently. You're never happy. You don't like what you're doing. You know how many poor working slobs are listening to you? Forget about money. Let me tell you about poor working slobs. Let me tell you something about poor working slobs. All of us work for a living. And the fact of the matter is some days you like going to work and some days you don't. You sit there all day and you BS with Artie, cool guy. You yeah, laugh, it's a, I, I know, you I know, jokes. I know. It's all fun for you. So, no. so here's the deal. Here's the deal. And you I go to work all day and BS thing. with your friends too. So who doesn't? Big deal. But you still bitch about your yeah, job. I don't do it for a living. What? I don't do it for a living. I hang out with my friends, have a good time after I'm done working all day. You do it during the day. So what? You don't you don't have fun during at work with some people. You don't you, you you're working nonstop. You got what do you do for a living? <laughs> I'm a manager. A manager of what? For construction. Yeah. Oh, and your and your nose is to the grindstone. You're not drinking beer and, and hanging out with your buddies. No, no, no. Okay, really. all right. Get out of here. <laughs> What's the matter with you? And I'm very happy with my life. But the fact of the matter is there are things I want to work on about myself. That's all. Now, who doesn't who doesn't admire that? Well, you you always want to be the same? You don't want to change? Well, change is good. Don't be threatened by change. I- said they were threatened it doesn't sound like that when you say it that all you're doing is working on some issues you're saying i'm miserable i am not you're saying i'm you miserable you have said that those no, are I the haven't. exact words wrong. you have used wrong absolutely don't change history on me buddy well whatever. that's i'm sitting here listening yeah well you still need to be in therapy that's the, the joke I know. here we go now attack robin that's right attack that's robin. right you're Simply such an because expert i'm repeating to you what you say Whatever. What are you talking about? You I just want to go. What do you I care? Do. This is one other thing I think about. Why isn't Howard? You know, I would only wish that he would be happy and be able to enjoy his life. I am. You're He's the one who so say. Hard. Here you go again. You're t- saying I'm not enjoying my life. I you am. You have said this to me on the air repeatedly. No, I haven't. What are uh, you saying? That's not true. There are aspects of my life I don't enjoy. Like anybody else. And those are the things I'm working on. All right. You didn't come in here and say a couple of weeks ago, I think I'm going to increase my amount yes. of therapy because, because I've been feeling particularly bad lately. Yeah. I had, I had some things going on in my life that I don't think anybody would feel too good about. I'm not going to tell you what they are here on the air. All right. They involve family stuff and stuff like that. And I just, I didn't want to discuss it with you. But I wasn't feeling well. So, I, so I'm going a little more. Because it makes me feel better. That's all. Why is that such? Why is that such a crime? I didn't say it was a crime. And who I'm, says that doesn't mean I don't enjoy my life? I do. And I'm not well, saying that you haven't sit and sat and said, "Oh boy, I'm having a wonderful time." Neither do you. <laughs> I don't hear you saying that. All right. Well, you don't talk to I me. I don't walk around going, "I'm having a wonderful <laughs> time." I just walk around. I have my life. That's all. Some of it's wonderful. Some of it isn't. Well, okay, all right. That's all. Maybe mm. I just hear only the complaints. 
What? I said, maybe I'm hearing the complaints, only the complaints. We are on the air? Yeah. Well, I'm talk about my, I'm talking about what's funny. I have a whole different life outside of here. All right. What word is this? Crazy. <laughs> Did you say Otto was a hack? I heard you say that. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. Otto sitting there going, you just called me a hack. I go, I didn't say anything. I had you on the show because I thought you were funny. <laughs> People are hearing things. Well, I don't think that's what's happening with me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't even. I don't. I, what's happening with you? I don't even know. I'm telling you what you have said to me. That's all I've done. Yeah. All right. Whatever. I'm not going to tell everyone that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. All right. We're going to be back right after these words. <laughs> when you can put me in the booby hatch too. Uh, All right, let's go to some phone calls. Oh, I was going to do a great segment here. I was going to talk about some of the interviews that my boy out in California did. Who's that, Gary Garver? That's right, but now... Well, I actually have a concern about you. I mean, I'm concerned no, if you say you're I'm rolling fine. around crying in bed and... I am. ...dreaming and talking. It's not bothering me. I'm just crying in bed. I, night, I Evidently, I cry in my sleep. I'm not supposed to be concerned? No. Oh, okay. No, what are you going to do about it? I'm not saying I could do anything. You should go see Otto and George. Uh, but I do care. <laughs> that's that's thank you. I know you care. That's yeah. that's not. I'm not. I'm not afraid of that. I know you care. I hear you. All right. Fred doesn't care. <laughs> no, Fred's yawning. I know, Rob. You're on the air. Fred yawns for the whole show because he's up with his band. Good morning. Yeah. Of all media. Good morning, hey, Robin. Robin. Hi. Hey, Rob. My big blue lip queen. Good morning. Uh, Howard, look between your, your legs, because I think you got a vagina, you big pussy. Oh, no. Crying yourself to sleep at night. I don't cry I myself to sleep at night. I told you I had been in, while I'm asleep, I was crying. I'm not aware of it. I was wah, told. Wah, wah, you big pussy. What? You better get some balls, because you sound like a woman. Oh, God damn, you can't tell anybody anything. See why I don't want to talk about my therapy? <laughs> oh, jeez. See, it becomes a big joke. <sighs> ridiculous i'm not crying myself that's the problem i should be crying myself to sleep i should be in touch with that but why am i sleep am i crying in my sleep i fart in my sleep too what does that mean my <laughs> pussy for that big pussy fart in your evidently sleep. i fart and cry yeah, you should yeah. fart when you're awake fart yourself to sleep <laughs> i'm supposed to do about that I wouldn't even know about it if I wasn't sleeping with someone. <laughs> hey, douchebag. Yeah? Douche, you're a douche, Howard. Douche, man. You know what your problem is? You had a goddamn big sister. You needed a big brother. That's your problem. You grew up with a goddamn sister. That's your problem, man. You don't even know how to be a man. That's your problem. Busy watching... Tell me what it is to be a man. Busy watching freaking Buffy and all kind of crap like that. What do you watch? I watch basketball and baseball. Football, what kind of man you know, are you? Man what kind of man are you? What kind of man? Crap like that. What kind He's of man? Sensitive. Let me tell you something. Your wet dreams aren't as good as my life. <laughs> listen, listen to me. Get out of here, you creep, fag. <laughs> Call me a fag. <laughs> Otto from Otto and George is on the phone. Oh, he is? Yes, Otto. Yeah, Howard, I snapped out of it. <laughs> I'm ready to do my airport bit now. <laughs> <laughs> are you all right now? Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I found a gray hair on my chest right before I went on the air, and I got very depressed right before I came into your studio. All right, listen, you're fine, and just go okay. home and relax, and you did a good job. Yeah, okay, cool. All right. That was about as funny as a wheelchair ramp. See what you started? <laughs> now I'm depressed. Thank you. There he is, Otto from Otto and George. Oh, like, dear. What a day. Maybe Otto took some medication or something. <laughs> yeah, popped a pill. <laughs> Dominic, you're on the air. You know, Howard, I saw a very happy person on the honeymoon. He walked around happy. On the honeymoon. Like, I was on ah, sex. Like, I married him. Married? Yeah, I'm happy. I married Dominic. <laughs> Don't you think part of his depression might Dominic, be he was on your honeymoon? Dominic now, <laughs> Dominic now called. I, Do, I took Dominic on his honeymoon. Uh -huh. Every Every weekend now, since I went on his honeymoon, yes. calls up like this. Here's the phone call. Howard, Howard, pick up, pick up. You're mad at me. I know I must have done something wrong on my honeymoon. I oh, must have done no. something wrong. Pick up, pick up. I want to be with you. I want to go out with you. Ugh. Pick up, pick up, pick up. Why? I know I must have done something wrong. I, you know what? 
I'm sick of him. <laughs> I'm so sick of Dominic. And so he's only talked First of all, to you. If have I you get, talked to him since the vacation? Every, if I get one more report from somebody telling me how they got every detail of oh, going, uh, all he does now is go away and talk about how he went away I with me. I never tell anyone. I'm done with, I'm making an announcement. I'm done with Dominic Barber. <laughs> If you want to call in on the show, fine. But um, personally, I don't want to get together with you. Yeah. I don't want to see you. Is that kind of the rejection because you got close to me? Is that like yeah, yeah, because I'm real about? close to you. You're, you're 900 pounds. There's no getting close to you. <laughs> he thinks I'm kidding. I, have I picked up one of your phone calls since that vacation? All January and February, every weekend you call, let's go out, let's go out. We went on the honeymoon. We got talked about things, close right. things. That's enough. And then you rejected it. Right. I don't want to. I don't want to know you anymore. <laughs> okay. I got to know you, and what I found is I don't like you. <laughs> I gave it a chance. It? I gave it a chance. I hung out with you in, a, in an intense <laughs> way, and I found that I I am you repulsed. Don't like you. <laughs> I don't like you. I don't like what you're about. Who do you? Like? I think you're friends with me because I'm famous. Who do you like? Who do I like? Yeah. Who do you think? I like John Stuttering John. Oh, that's for this week. You didn't like him a month before. No, that's not true. I like Stuttering John. Yeah, for this week. That's I like Ralph. Even though it kills you, I like Ralph. <laughs> Robin, Robin? I have friends. Robin, you're yes. right. Well, I'm right. right about what? Well, if he gets close, it, he thinks he may reveal himself. Dominic, you and I can never get close. You don't stop talking about yourself. Uh, how it, it's, just, it's just like the rejection. It's the male issue. I understand it. Yeah, yeah you're a normal male. I understand. It's the male it. issue. Like, like, it's my problem. that I don't want. How about it's your problem that you're so repulsive? Oh, how about no. I tell you not to Look do something how, and you do it anyway? What did he do? What did he do? I told you what he did. What told you right on the air what he does. He doesn't oh. listen. I don't listen to you? Dominic thinks he's me. Oh. <laughs> Stuttering John went out to dinner with Dominic. And I, Dominic pulls him out of the restaurant and goes, don't embarrass me in this restaurant, John. Don't try. It's what I do to Dominic. Right. Yeah, he starts doing it to John. And John was like, it was the most bizarre thing ever. I wanted to leave. <laughs> yeah, you, you should have left. I was taking, Robin, I was taking Dominic and his wife out for, you know, like, like I guess, like, for, you know, for his marriage or whatever. Right. Yeah. To my favorite place I've been going to for three years now. Yeah. I, I'm sitting, first of all, you know, uh, Dominic shows up 40 minutes late. Uh. And, and then he gets there. And the first thing he can do is, John, come here. He brings me out to the lobby. He goes, I don't want you burping. I don't want you screaming. I don't yeah, want you being stuttering, John. Yeah, this Just is say, what I have to do with Dominic, because when I take him places, I go, Dominic, please don't embarrass me. Please don't berate people. Please don't think you're entitled to to, to mistreat people because you're with me. So he's going to do it with you. Yeah, as if he doesn't, hasn't known me for 12 years. Like I, I go to restaurants and burp and Excuse fart. Excuse me. You've ever seen me berate anyone, Howard? Yes. Like, yeah, I do. I never berate Bring me, person. Bring me ice and don't... <laughs> here, here, Dominic. Here, tell me if this is wrong. Bring me... Water with ice, and don't stop at any other table to help other people. <laughs> just, be, just bring it to me. Right, right. I, I'll have waiters call and restaurants calling all day. How well I treat people and how respectful. I think it's an issue of getting. No, too close listen to me. Them. Yeah, I'm. T hey. You know what it is? I couldn't stand being close. You know, hey, Dominic, that that, hey, Dominic, honestly, well, that bothered me throughout the whole dinner. Well, it should have because when you <laughs> why would table, you? You can't like when you came to my house. You can't belch and curse and play something. When did you belch? Uh, you belched at his house? He claims that, that I belched at his house when he took me there at, like, 2 in the morning to show off his, like, you know, mansion. Uh, well, you know what? But I'm, you <laughs> see, Howard, I knew that when you got back, you got depressed, you got angry. I knew you'd turn on me. That's what my therapist said. Uh, my therapist said... Why are you discussing me in therapy? Therapist. You know, you don't come up in therapy for me at all. I don't even, I don't even think... You're obsessed with me. You me don't you think it's weird that you're obsessed with me? After 17 years of knowing you, you told me you did discuss me in therapy. I don't know you for... Dominic, you were a listener for 17 years. Stop it. You're a, a, an obsessed fan. Oh, is that how you see it? Yeah. Well, how many set stands do you take on the honeymoon? How many friends do you have beside me? Zero. Oh, that killed up. I mean, take him on the honeymoon, forget it, Howard. I know. And, and, and isn't he going around telling it's everyone? like, you know, I know you're his best friend. Now I'm his best friend. Well, I got to put a stop to it. He can't be normal. <laughs> and he goes around telling people he's my lawyer. He's not my lawyer. Yeah, I understand. Are you my lawyer? No. Okay. Well, why do you tell people you're my lawyer? Obviously, during the last few weeks that you're back, and you need four sessions, and you're, and you're getting depressed like we... I'm not we depressed. I'm having a fine time. You are uh, jumping to that conclusion. Like we hurt your hand. We what? Hurt your hand. What? 
Of Good Lord, I gotta leave. It's oh. getting too bizarre. <laughs> You're bizarre. I just don't want to hang around with you anymore. <laughs> Good I'll luck. Goodbye. Oh, Goodbye. <laughs> he's he's a little crazy himself. <laughs> oh, please. That was no, a lot crazy. When you hang around with Dominic, he then tells everybody everything that goes on. Tells everybody your business. And he's impossible. So I said, I said, I gotta chill out with this guy for a while. This is gonna kill him. You saying this? Well, what am I gonna do? I mean, he doesn't. He doesn't know how to chill. There's nothing private. With this guy. Right? It, 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 I mean, I don't know. I, I thought it was weird, that whole thing, that conversation. And then, and then after dinner, Robert, he goes, you know what? I could do this again with you. I didn't realize we could actually have a good time. I'm like, F you. I don't want to be with you ever again. That's what I'm saying. That's what he does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks a lot for giving me a, a rock G G th Thanks for approving of me. Yeah, Ralph. Dominic's still there? No, no he's, he's gone. gone. I, I heard from... I was in Zay Bars the other day, and somebody starts filling my ear about how Dominic comes in there and starts yelling, you know who I am, and if you don't get him, serve him quick enough, and he was going over to your house. You know, years ago when he used to come over to the house in Long Island and stuff, he'd run in there and goes, I got to get stuff for Howard, I got to get stuff for oh, Howard. Dear. And dropping my name and yeah, yelling. Was us in, wasn't it in Vegas he was saying he was your lawyer? And yeah, yeah he, just, he just goes too far. I'm, I was it's weird. Lawyer. He seems like a nice guy, and then he does stuff like that. Well, he is a nice guy. He's a good man, but he just... He gets crazy He's around me. Wacky. He's it must, in Zabar screaming, this is for Howard, everyone, stop what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> it must have been something weird <laughs> with John, though, because the next night I did a show with John, and he was so shocked by how Dominic acted towards him. He was he really was hurt by it. Yeah, he was like, I can't believe what happened. Because I know him for 11 years. Why, why would he do that? Because, because... You've gone out with him before, right? Well, with, with other people, but never was there yeah. ever an incident, ever. Maybe he hadn't eaten in uh, five hours. <laughs> yeah, he was low on blood sugar. I finally did get to see him eat, which is which is always fun. You know? <laughs> oh God! Did he eat or did yeah, he act no, like he, he wasn't hungry? Ate, yeah, yeah. yeah, he ate. Yeah. <laughs> you see how he like brings the fork? He puts his hand under the fork and brings it up to his belly. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big pudgy fingers. Yeah. <laughs> he loves to eat, man. He needs the Bally's fitness. <laughs> yeah, why is he in the challenge? Oh, <laughs> he couldn't hit last a day on that. <laughs> so, Ralph, you gonna fight Gary in the undercard or what? What, what, John? Are you going to fight Gary? I, I don't know. He would fight him. You're interested I, in I doing? think I would. I, I think know? Ralph would win. I do, too. You know, I got to think. I mean, I was thinking about it. I mean, you know, I'm in better shape than Gary. I'm, I'm taller. I'm, I'm probably faster. Younger. Younger. Possibly I got a better stronger. than him. I bet you're faster and stronger. I got better I got rhythm. Question. I mean, Gary could probably, you know, get. I, I'm not a fighter, but I, I got to think I could, you know, I could learn. Well, <laughs> I know. That's what you think about everything. That's the problem. Do you think that, how do you think you'd react if you took a punch to the face once? I don't know. I think, I think I know. I think, and I don't mean it. <laughs> that's you know, the X factor. Have you, have you ever been, <laughs> Ralph, have you, have you ever been punched in the face? Have you ever been punched in the face? Uh, I don't think so. No, I have. Have you ever been in a fight? Like a, a fight where you didn't put your hands over your, seriously, like a real fight with a guy? No. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, for the right amount of money, though, I'll learn, man. Yeah, but, yeah, but that's. And you, you know what? I got more time to train than you too. So I mean, it's like take all, I... take all the time in the world. <laughs> <laughs> How do you react to the fact that Gary wants to punch you in the face? Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you don't, you don't, you better stay out of the ring. Because that's what's going to happen. He's going to immediately punch you in the face. I'll go right for the face. <laughs> We're going to do an undercard, though, aren't we? I think so. If we... you guys want to fight, I ain't going to stand in your way. I think, no, no, I, mean, I think a lot of people would like to I'm see not, that. I'm not out to fight, Ralph. I'd like to see it. <laughs> but there is a whole different... There is a, like a... I I'm think sorry, everybody hate would like Oh, we could hate each other in a minute. Period. Yeah. Who wouldn't love to see a fight like that? That'd I be know. great. I think it'd be a good fight, actually. Who George, you're on the air. Hello, Howard. Yeah. Hi, right, this is George White. Uh, listen, uh, I want to tell you, you're a good guy. And you go to therapy, and you're a really good guy for that. And you're more of a man than these people that are calling in and berating you. Well, of course, any any idiot can uh, can uh, you know avoid issues. It takes a man to confront them. But here's the th here's the weird thing about it. I agree with you, but like ten I'm years. Sorry, ago, Howard. I can't hear you. I'm on a cell phone. That's pretty bad connection. Ten years ago, Howard, you told everyone that if you went to a psychiatrist, you were a, you were a pussy. That you should just deal with your problems and shut up and get over it. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> you want to know something? Dealing with your problems and going to a psychiatrist, sometimes you need the intervention of a second or third party to maybe clarify some issues. And you're doing the right thing. And of course. People that are unwilling to do that and unwilling to deal with it, they're, they're the ones that have the problem. 
That's right. But you know, it always seems that famous people are always like in, in like the you know, therapist couch. Because you know? they can afford it. Yeah, I know a lot of people who need therapy who can't afford it. They can't afford it. A lot, if therapy's damn expensive. It but sure that's is, no reason uh, not to do it. I mean, if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. But if you can afford it, you should do it if you, if, if you, if you have a need to do it. That's all. John, do you still go? No. You're, you're done. Uh, yeah. No, uh, I, I... John do doesn't need it. I, I do go to my pharmacologist just to get the, you know, oh, the, the uh, Luvox. John gave up. He just takes medication. <laughs> And controls his he moods that way. He's the only person I know with a pharmacologist. Yeah. You meet him on a street corner. He just, he just meets his pharmacologist. <laughs> like I Bucky. just think that's hey, fantastic. Every time I went to a shrink, he just gave me pills. Yeah. I got you nothing out of it. You know what's great? Hard if I, when I go to my pharmacologist, I go, you know, I'm flying this week. Can you prescribe me some Xanax? He goes, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I met John's pharmacologist at a party because John was trying to he was talking behind my back. And he was trying to get his Luvox up from like you know. No, that was my doc. That, 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 no, oh, was a different guy who was prescribing you drugs. Was he a Vicodin? Yeah, it was actually the, you know that, that was. Did you get Vicodin now? I could get anything I want. Right. It's great. You could just go. You know what? I think I'm in a mood for some Percocet. You know, and then, and then he'll go. In no, the kidding. mood. Well, yeah, you, you can get it's great. Can you, wow. can, you, can you get Black Jeez. Beauties? So far, I got Xanax and I got uh, Black and I got Beauty. Luvox. So he is. He's a drug dealer. Right. Yeah. Nice. That's what he is. <laughs> Talk. You're on the air with an education. Yeah, Howard. I know why you're crying at night. Why? You had uh, Rebecca remain stainless alone in your apartment. You didn't do nothing. Oh. I, I cry for you, man. There you go. You cried too. Well, there's a reason to cry. Hey, how, could you call Rebecca and ask if it's okay that we see those pictures? Yes. Sure. Because I would love to see that. that. Well, she says okay, then it's fine. She asked me the other day if she could see him. I said no. Oh, she couldn't we even get the right. viewing part. I'm afraid she'll take him back. <laughs> All right, we got to take a break. When we come back, we should do some news, Robin. All right. And stop analyzing me and do what you do best, the news. I am not going to analyze you anymore because no. it's too painful. That's not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was you great. You love though. it. She I loves it. She I'm, loves not, it. I'm not enjoying this at all. This no, you are. No. You love my pain. No, no, no. No. <laughs> Whatever we do, going to be fast because i got to eat something. <laughs> all right. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Who or what he is? I don't know. I don't know. I, I went stock car racing with Ryan. Oh, uh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, what happened? Yeah. 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 He, dresses, the stutter, no. he dresses in his, like, Dale Earn, Earnhardt outfit. Such, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, such a... He's got, like, such a whole racing yeah. gear. Yeah, okay, like John. like a kid dressing, like, for the army. Hey, John. You know? oh, John. Funny. He's got a costume. Don't, yeah, don't got... go there, man. Don't go any further than that, okay? <laughs> because you don't want to go... In, you don't want to go to where I'm going to go. Oh, really? Why? All right? Where are you going to go? I'm not saying a word. Let's see you go somewhere. Say something else, John. I want to see where yeah. you're going. He ain't going anywhere. not going anywhere. He's probably going to make fun of my family. I'm not making fun of you. What did Ronnie wear to the race car? Uh, I wore a sweatshirt, okay? That was it. What kind of sweatshirt? Dale Earnhardt sweatshirt, okay? <laughs> Big deal. What did you wear? <laughs> Wait a minute. Card. Wait a minute. Hold on, John. What did you wear? The Gold's Gym shirt. You had to do the Stuttering John show for everybody in the middle of the classroom. Oh, was that when you were kissing the teacher's the ass? I they love him there because he's like the big star there because right. he's like the star driver. They're only the only so guy, what? the only guy who gets so up to what? 180 miles per What's hour. Right. So he knows everything. He shows up late for the class. He doesn't need the class anymore. Did he have his beeper so with him? Wrong with yes, oh, I did. I don't. I didn't see a beeper. Yeah, in that I had outfit. a beeper. You didn't have a yeah, beeper I with did you. So. No. Nah. Yeah. Okay. John didn't see one on you. John didn't see your beeper. <laughs> John. You gotta John. see his outfit. Everything's though. a stuttering John show everywhere he goes. Hey, Ronnie, that outfit's not a little funny. The minute he sits down, uh, hey, Ronnie, uh, 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 Ronnie, uh, uh, what's with hey, Ronnie, the shirt, Ronnie? Ronnie, uh, Ronnie, in all defense, you don't think it's a little funny grown man wearing a Dale Earnhardt sweatshirt? Yeah, what was there? Wait a minute. It, it, you know, it's not like it's a sweatshirt says Dale Earnhardt. It's like, it's, it's, it's like. Uh, Race <laughs> regulation quality, like it's like it's like if Dale Earnhardt actually wore it, you know, it looks just like a real right. racing sweatshirt. You know right. what I mean? And what does it say, Dale Ar Earnhardt? It has like all the like be of good rich or whatever. Oh, you he's know? got logo. He is a, a racing like he wears it like he's a race car driver. <laughs> <laughs> he's got man. sponsors. <laughs> what you, what's on your sweatshirt? Like you got sponsors or something? You wear all the logos. Excuse me. Come on, just tell me the truth. It's a sweatshirt <laughs> with logos on it. Gary saw it. Yeah, it's got one, it's got two <laughs> logos on it. Okay. <laughs> what did you see? It looked like it looked like what the guy wears when you get to a race. Car. No, oh, Gary, don't start with me, man. I, I, glanced with you? At, I glanced at it. It looked like what what he would wear if he it's got to. It's a sweatshirt. Okay, <laughs> a red, white, and black sweatshirt. <laughs> As a number, number three. <laughs> number three for Dale Earnhardt. Right, right before we left, I, he changed from his work clothes into his racing outfit. Yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah okay, John, I'm going to wear a suit to drive a race car. <laughs> wow. I love that he's got these little emblems on his shirt like he's the race car STP. driver. STP. All right, he has STP on there. A Valvoline. <laughs> really? And why do you wear a gold gym shirt? What's up with that? What, that's, I, I, what do you think what's I really, up with that? Do you really think I... 
Well, why do you wear a gold gym shirt? I'll tell you why. Bev Francis from Gold Gym is training me for okay. for no money. So first okay. of all, if I was wearing it, they'd do me a favor and, and do it a favor for, right. for everybody to get me in shape. So I don't okay, die. so I'm wearing the sweatshirt because okay. I like okay. the sweatshirt. But I, I don't really, I don't okay. sit there and choose what. Hey, you know what? The guy my races, wife lays my clothes. The guy races a car. I want you to dress up like a race car driver. Okay. okay. Here's the best. That's all. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. Then okay. he starts goofing. Why did you embrace it? And then he starts goofing on me in the class, so I, so I brought up, I brought up, oh I brought up God. that he has a tire in his room. Right, the whole class started laughing that he has a, <laughs> that he has a racing tire. He's in been other race car geeks to laugh. They all laughed at his he tire is in the room. Such a liar, Ronnie, Why do you, what? why do you go anywhere with him? He's a liar. I'm never going again. Don't worry about it. Oh yes, we are. Uh, I'm not going July eighth. I just can't. Oh <laughs> come on, Ronnie. I ain't going with you. Ronnie, you don't think it's funny a grown man puts on a Dale Earnhardt? Yeah, what, what, what about Hey, Ronnie, don't feel bad. When I went to the Knicks game, I dress up like a Nick. What about what about the rest of the people that were there? What were they wearing? Yeah, the guy with the, with the, the, with the, yeah. I, I, I think a yeah, guy from okay. a, the Midwest actually had an STP jacket on as well. <laughs> no, he had. A were Jeff, you jealous he had of him? Jeff Gordon jacket. Okay, on. so you, you had the Dale Hardy. Yeah, yeah, he had the Jeff Gordon. You had the Dale Were you Hardy. jealous of him, Ronnie? Yeah, and you know what the guy said to me? The guy comes up to me. He goes, "I didn't want to say nothing in front of John because John would have goofed on me." He goes, "But I got two ties in my room." Uh, yeah, get out of here! Swear to God. Hey, the two of you. He also had two teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What is you know, so, Ronnie? You don't have to take. I don't get him, man. You I don't. don't get him. I get him. No, I don't get him. I love what you. What don't Ronnie? you get? He loves everybody. This is his problem. You see, he tells you. Were, you, you wore a racing outfit. I didn't wear a racing outfit. I'm sorry I for noticing. How could he not jeans. notice? Who's not going to notice you in a racing a, a Dale Earnhardt shirt? So say you like to feel like a race car driver, so you Howard, like to dress like You have like a one. special racing Wait outfit. A Robin, a sweatshirt is a racing but outfit? But it's got, oh, it's you not only it Dale Earnhardt, you got logos on it. Like, you got sponsors okay, so, or something. Okay, so I admit I wore that. What's the big deal? You're right, pretending so you're to be a race car driver. You know, you remind me of Barbie. She has an outfit for everything. <laughs> it's like Halloween for him. Howard, he gets into his outfit, then he goes downstairs with a son, and he hops into his Corvette. Yeah, it's so like, what's wrong with that? And then he races. And then he races off. to the to the stock it, car race. And it's been it's he been in riding in, in a jeep. And it's been in riding what's in a jeep, with a jeep with smelly duty diapers in it. Uh, <laughs> please, uh, please. Yeah. Look at Gary, 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 Gary's trying to keep you a straight have, face. Be honest now. Do you have honest, racing John, gloves? The guy in the do you have guy, racing gloves? Do you have racing gloves? Yes. That's what I call it an outfit, right? Gloves, jacket. Come on. Is he sitting in the classroom in the gloves? Oh, yeah, I mean, he's, he has his Dale Earnhardt outfit on in the classroom. Uh, yeah, Dude, right. it was, hey, they it's were his, even laughing It's his at moment you. to shine. I had, you got a racing car credit card with a picture of your favorite driver. He's king of the dweebs in there. <laughs> he's king of the dweebs. Wait a second. So you, you don't have to take the racing class because you already know so much? No, I took the class again. You did? Yeah. But, but he knows everything. You know, he's yeah, know. Is fact, he the teacher's pet? He started to recite. He goes, yeah, John, Formula One racer, Mario Andretti. He started telling me every racer and what kind of car they drive and why. You know, there was this guy in my school. He wasn't like a real good student or anything, but in shop, he was a genius. <laughs> and, the, and the shop teacher loved him. Ronnie shines at a racing car class. Let's get back to Gary Busey. Yes. <laughs> What about it? No, let's Why stay on the racing outfit. What did, I do, what did I do wrong it's with Johnny, Gary Busey? I, I was under attack, but you were busy somewhere else. I didn't else. know about it, okay? Of course not. No, because you... I, How would you know? Wait, because the rules were at the time, don't come into the studio unless there was something going on. Yeah, I but, didn't know anything was going on. All right, on. there you go. How That's a good I, explanation. How am I supposed to know? Then you tell we me try after, to beep you. Then you tell me afterwards, <laughs> you tell me afterwards the rules change. Oh, now, during every break, come in during the commercial. Okay, fine. Tell me that from the beginning. All right, good. All right, so no problem. You're right. Defense, You're right. I'm wrong. In Ronnie's defense, when Beetlejuice gets a little, you know, ornery, he's always here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he pats Beetlejuice. Oh, when, when the roller girl, the roller whore is here, he's always right on top of that one. <laughs> Strip search is her. When all the good-looking girls come in, I'm here, too. No, if you, if you, um, that's fine. John, John's like, forget about John, all right? Oh, Ronnie, come John, on, Ronnie. John, John does this to everybody. It's not okay. funny that you John, have John. He, he throws everybody under the bus, like Cabby says, okay? Yeah, okay? He throws everybody under the <laughs> bus, and they don't come outside, out the door, and go, you know, I really love, love you, Ronnie. You're a good guy. He does. I love you. I You're do a good love man, you. Ronnie. I love you. I do love you. But he's, he's a lying. king. Goof on a Dale Earnhardt outfit. Lying. What the oh, hell show is this? Anybody on. except yourself, okay? okay? Yeah, like... Ronnie, you don't love anybody. You're 55 years old, and you're yeah, dressing like a race car driver. Yeah, that's that not funny. Five. You have racing gloves, a matching outfit. That's yeah. not funny. So when you go out to play your, your gigs, you have different kinds of guitars? You take them with That's you? a good point. At least I'm making money at the game. Pretend games. to be a rock star. Who's paying you to wear Dale Earnhardt? You're not a rock star. Yeah, but who's paying you to put STP labels on your jacket? I didn't. Nobody's paying me. So why? All right, all right. All right. It's yeah. enough. It's enough. You guys get off each other's case. Uh, yeah, right. I'm now, make up. I'm not talking to him anymore. Yes, I, you know, I, gotta, I gotta say one thing. Come on, what am I, I calling, pal? You I, two make I, up. I told, I told him that we, I was going to the back, to, you know, because we got rained out on Friday. Oh, it was so upsetting we got rained out. 
here we go. Here we go. Yeah, like you weren't upset. What were you, you doing? You were really there? bummed out because my brother and sister. Really yeah, what were you do doing there, Mister Rockefeller? Pays for everybody to go to race car school. Yeah, so and he's always crying. He's got no money. He it was a David, Christmas gift. He owes but, David in the garage twenty dollars, and he's spending two thousand dollars. Yeah, why are you spending two thousand dollars for race school? First of all, you really want to know the price? Yeah. It was nine hundred dollars. Okay, where do you get nine hundred dollars? You can't pay your parking there. bill downstairs. It was a Christmas gift for my brother. It was why? Are you, and a birthday why are you getting nine hundred dollar gifts from your brother and sister when you don't have a pot to pee? It's something that they dreamed of doing and all their lives. So I wanted to so make let them happen. get their own dreams. Yeah, yeah. Or, or How come you didn't pay for me? You love me so much because you make a good living. Not how do you know how much I make? According to him, I'm never around to take care of him. So how can I make a good living? I didn't say that. You don't carry a beeper with you, and you know that's true. That's on not, weekends, not, you need to relax. Get Laura on the phone. Ask her how many times okay. she beeps. How about if I can't get Laura on the phone, and I need to get in touch with you directly, and I beep you, and I can't get you on the beeper? These is these are numbers to frustrate you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I look at I look up in the in the in the in the uh, computer. Ronnie limo driver, fifty seven numbers. Yeah. Every one of them, there's nobody there. <laughs> yeah, we got to do. Uh, maybe they have a Dale Earnhardt beeper that has a picture on it. Oh, then yeah. it'll carry it around. Do I have to get you a Dale my Earnhardt beeper? I don't know what, how you could say my beeper doesn't work. It only works if it's on you. I always have it on me. All right, thank you. You're done now. But and John, so are you, you does John. make a point. You shouldn't be paying for everybody. You're constantly borrowing money. Yeah, it, it was a Christmas gift. So what does that mean? Whatever. What does that mean? Christmas gift what, could be a jar of jam. Family, no, no, no. But but I can. So you can I don't, afford I don't it. Take I don't take care of my family to the point where I can't pay my garage bill. Or, or you can't even bill. buy lunch for yourself. What are you, I just you bought Audi lunch yesterday. Yeah, so. once. Know, but, yeah. And then, but you know what's weird, John? $50. No, no, we'll you, hear about it 20 times. No, what's weird is that like you, you, you bought the <laughs> 30. Christmas, <laughs> you bought the Christmas presents. It's good bought, for five free lunches for a month. You bought the Christmas presents and you bought lunch. And everything's great this week. And then all of a sudden, in two weeks, everything won't be great. And it'll be a whole different thing. And then a month after that, I don't know why you're getting angry at me. And not only that, his wife can't even buy clothes. His wife can't buy clothes. Come on, John. How's it feel? John, address it. I'm not his I wife couldn't. Yeah. Why do you get a nine hundred? Why do you get a nine hundred dollar uh, racing gift and you can't buy your wife a winter coat? I bought yeah. a winter coat. No, oh you come didn't. on, dude! It took a little. After I mean, we embarrassed you into it. I, you you know, I got to get the important things. <laughs> no, but you. It's you, not you, funny. Why you spend like? What you, you told me that you were you were low on money because you spent thirty grand on furniture that was a little <laughs> bit more than you wanted, and then you spend nine hundred on racing school, and then like you're I don't know, you, and then you don't have a dollar for like McDonald's. It's more than it's more than nine hundred for racing school because he's, he he paid for more than two people. Yeah, my beep is going off right now. Good. It's well, not me, though. Somebody can get a hold of it's me. It's not me on the phone. Laura. Yeah, great. That's funny to me. Yeah, somebody's putting numbers in. Playing there you games. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Don't play games with Ronnie. And games is not in his no. vocabulary. This man has a deal. He tells me I'm, I'm angry. Sweatshirt. I'm an angry guy. He tells me I'm an I'm You're an angry. angry. Why are you yelling? I don't get it, man. You don't know that everyone thinks you're angry and you're unapproachable? <laughs> I just don't. What's that? You don't know that everyone thinks you're angry and unapproachable? You don't You don't know that? Everybody? Everybody. Who's everybody? Everyone. Who's everyone? Gary, say something. Come on. <laughs> Who's the big pussy here? I, I, I'm telling Gary, you, man. No, no. you got to do I an have, attitude. I, 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 Gary, I have a great relationship I get along great. I don't say you don't have a Listen to what Gary is saying. I get along great with you. I get along great with you. But sometimes when people approach you... It's like it's a, it's you could sometimes be like, "What do you want?" As yeah. opposed to, "Hi, how are you?" You don't have social amenities. Oh, and you don't do that too. You're in a business. When people are bothering you. No, no, no. I'm not talking about people a bad bother. day. People are bothering you, and you like everyone's uh, bothering. Uh, you. Excuse me, Ronnie. You is bothering your office. Yeah. We're supposed to know when you're being bothered. <laughs> Sometimes you just you know nah, you got a, you got a, you 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 a very negative vibe about not, you. I'm not the only guy, and you're always happy, right? I'm telling you, you're in a service business. Right, how is that dealing with the? People? I'm not dealing and with. And I don't give you good service. I didn't say that. Yes, I said you everyone that. says you're. I didn't say that. When he can I said find that you, when I can find you, you're fine. <laughs> oh, it's just you're an angry guy. So you're you. angry about driving. Something. You don't like to drive. What are you talking Unless about? you're driving your Corvette. Unless you're driving a race car. That's not true either. Why don't you hire? Why don't you buy a race car and stretch it and put me in it? <laughs> <laughs> then you'll be happy. Don't tempt me. Oh, then he do can it. Ask I'll you to it. go places. We'll look, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll stretch out. I'll stretch out a Corvette. Mike the limo driver, you're on oh, the air. Yeah, Mike. The, yeah, here's another one. Hey, what's up, Howard? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. I tell you, yesterday when you told me about the phone being broken, I, I cringed because I know I got to go home yeah, and right. tell him. Yeah, right. Well, I would have told him myself, but who can approach him? And then I hear this. Then the guy goes, it's not broken. Yeah. I didn't do nothing. Yeah. I, I'll go, well, no, I'm telling you, it's cutting out more, and I know the difference. First I, I ever Nothing's heard wrong it. with it. Nothing's wrong with it. 
Yeah, I didn't do nothing. It's you. What did you do? I didn't like do nothing. When you first got the limo and you had to make the phone call on your knees. <laughs> yeah, I knew I had to go back and tell him that the phones were wrong. Oh my god! Yeah, and and so how did weird. how did he receive that? Oh, forget about it. <laughs> wait, Mike, wait, this is the Mike that works for. Yeah, yeah. this is Mike. Yeah, really? this is Mike. He works for. Mike's Ronnie. backing me up. He knows. Yeah, good. Mike's knows. a nice guy. I go to Mike. I go, Mike. Ronnie, Ronnie's no I good. Mike is nice. So maybe Mike should take over. All right. Uh, here we go again. Yeah, here, here we, we go, go again. <laughs> what do you mean? Here we go again. He's you're the one who makes these statements, examples. you moron. You ask for you ask for examples of how you're an angry guy. Now I'm giving them to you, and you're getting angry. I just got off the phone with you half an hour ago. I told you about the why. You're ranting and raving. Everybody's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so how can I approach you? Everybody yeah, right. How can I approach you and say, Ronnie, I'm having a problem with the phone if you're going to rant and I rave? Didn't, I didn't tell everybody. I didn't crazy. do nothing. <laughs> I know you didn't do nothing. You're the only but look one into it. Hey, Ronnie, by the way, let me a beeper number. <laughs> Do you have his beeper? Nah. <laughs> yeah, well, Mike, Mike, uh, here's another. He, yeah, okay. Mike, uh -oh. Mike is supposed to work for me, right? Okay. So now how am I supposed to get in touch with him? The guy turns his beeper off totally. Well, now you know how I feel. He threw it out. <laughs> threw it out? Yeah. Threw his wow. beeper away. Mike? He tells me I got a cell phone. Well, you, see how, you see how frustrating it is? Oh, Howard, this is, you know it's not true. Dean, you you're on the air. You know that's hey, not Howard, true. How are you? Hey, how you doing? Let, get get Laura on the phone. Uh, welcome by Central Park, and I seen Ronnie sitting there. I guess he was waiting for the beep to go up. He must have been running in the park. Yeah. And he was pretending like he was sleeping, or maybe he was. I was like, hey, you're Ronnie from, you know, your Howard Stern's driver. He's like, what do you want? <laughs> like, I ain't got no time for this. And he just shut his eyes, and he pretended <laughs> like he was oh, sleeping. Oh, he's such like, a, yeah, yeah, waiting, okay. Waiting for the beep to go yeah, up. Yeah, right. Pick him up. No, I, t I want, I was frustrated yesterday. The phone isn't working properly, you know? There's a million things wrong with the phone. Like, you can't even hang it up. You've been so, complaining about What do you mean you can't hang it up? Since he got the car. When, I'm, when I'm holding the cradle thing yeah. and I hit end, it won't end. It won't end the conversation. you got to <laughs> physically hang it up each time. The so, buttons don't work. The buttons don't work at all. So, But I'm not going to tell Ronnie that. So I tell you Mike. You sort of try to deal with it. So I just wait for the very worst thing to happen. Yeah. So <laughs> I tell Mike, and I see Mike cringe because he's got to go tell Ronnie. <laughs> It's like, don't tell me, please. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie, uh, does this make you think maybe you ought to readdress uh, how you're treating people? You're unapproachable. You you're just... angry. You're just an angry guy. Unless it's some hot chick, you're you're, you're a <laughs> Even mess. The Even the hot God, chicks say you, you get mad. What hot chicks? The, the chick, the intern with the belly shirts. Yeah. She says sometimes you yell at her. I don't yell at her. Oh, she said that, Ronnie, that he's always You get yelling. angry. You got angry because she wore a long dress the other day. <laughs> That's Look right. at John, man. He goes to me. Because you fire. know you're the one who listens. You listen what you got. I don't get you, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give Ronnie that one. I mean, I I've cut, I know you do. You I, got angry, I've, too? I've cut my social, socializing with John down to almost nail because I just don't want to be under the microscope. You, gee, I'm so upset. You yeah. can't. You can't. You can't. <laughs> It's worth, it's worth do anything with John. If anything, I, I know, like it. When you go out with John, he might as well be on Fox at eight o'clock. You know what I mean? Yeah. I do it for the listeners. Listeners want to hear what no, you, you guys do, are. You, you yeah. Look at poor Audie. Audie. What he did to Audie. What he, he goes to Audie? out. He goes out to lunch with Audie. Audie's trying to have a nice, quiet lunch. This guy's telling him every piece of food he puts in his mouth. Yeah, and it would have been a real funny show if John kept that quiet. Yeah, thanks, Ronnie. Yeah, that, you know, you know what? I won't say about you and your outfit and already at lunch. I you won't have to say anything, anything about me because I'm not going be back great. with you. Don't worry That'll about it. That'll be a great show. Go back with your family and enjoy yourself without me, okay? Oh. Do the show for everybody oh, else over there. Come on, Ronnie. You do your show. Hey, Stand Mike. up's in the yeah. middle of the room. See? Doing his show. I'm practicing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's why I tell him on the phone. I don't want to tell him in person. <laughs> it's, it's, it's too much. <laughs> so quit, Mike. You, uh, you try to quit a why couple would you of weeks, why don't you just quit permanently? What? Why should, why should you he quit? You heard me? Why don't you just quit permanently? Uh, why would you say that? He's your best guy. Yeah, he, tra he tried to you quit got a few Mike weeks ago. Jerry. He don't want to work for you anymore. <laughs> what? You don't want to work for me? So. No, go ahead. Tell him the truth, Mike. Uh, tell him the truth. Lay it on the table. Go ahead. Tell him how when I What need a nice a guy off. you are. Go ahead. Yeah, tell him every time when I need to take a day off, how I'm sweating for two days to day before. Yeah, because you don't, you, you, want, you don't want to call the guys and work a schedule <laughs> out with them. That's why. There's three other guys to work with. Because <laughs> yeah. you're too good to do call everybody else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. Listen, listen, I'll be how are you gonna? How are you gonna have a nice relationship with Mike? If you're I don't want a nice relationship with Mike. Okay, <laughs> we're done. It works for you. We're done. John's done. Don't worry CEO about it. CEO of Mund Enterprises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Running that empire. <laughs> John, what's so, what's so funny? 
You know, Mike's a good. Mike's a, Mike's a great guy. So you know what? Good. So let so Mike work take with off. him a little bit. I got a great idea. How's this? Yeah. Go ahead. When we get done All right. today, go after ahead. The show. Go ahead. Get on the phone with Mike. Have All Laura right. call him. Go ahead. Set up a whole situation with him. I'll sell him the car. The whole deal. You I'm want sorry. out? You want out? I'm you out. want out of your security business? I'll be out. And you want out I'll of your, dr- and your driving? I'll business. be gone. You want out of everything? I want you to be happy. If you're not happy with me, I'm gone. Did I say I'm not happy? Yeah. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I said I can't reach you on a beeper. Now you're no, quitting. No, you said you're not happy. Do you see how you're yelling at me and I'm your boss? You said you're Do not happy. Do you see happy. how you're yelling but at me? you said you're not happy. I never I said I was if, unhappy. I said I can't reach you on a beeper. If, if a guy is running a if business... If I need you to... Cust- cust- if, if I tell customer, you I can't reach you on a beeper, why are you calling me a liar? I'm not calling you a liar. So just I say, just I'm going to try and work on that better, Mr. Stern. No, I'm not going to say that because it, I always... See, he's angry. You can't tell him anything. If I say, hey, I'm having trouble reaching a beeper, he say, you know what? Let me, I'm telling you, I do carry my beeper. You, there man. are times I go for my Sunday drive. I don't have it on me. Maybe it was one of those times. I'll carry it with me. You're, and then you're I'm done. in my race car now suit. You're I yelling. can't wear a beeper Now a you're yelling. Suit. Now you're yelling. You want to quit. You're going to end your I'm business. I'm not saying I'm quitting. Just do your job if you're and not, relax. If you're not happy, then... I didn't say I wasn't happy. And if you're going to end your career, I'm not going to uh, hire Mike, who's a, a police officer. I'm going to hire a different limo company if you're ending your career. If you want me to do that, I'll do that. You want me to go hire a different limo company, I'll do it today. Well, if you're not happy, then, you, you know. Do you want me to do that? Is I, that what you're saying? I didn't say that. All right. Then be I quiet said, and leave. I just then said leave. If, leave I just and go calm if, yourself down. I just said if calm you're not yourself happy, down. then you, leave. you do what you have to do. Go calm yourself down you know in the what other I'm do you want me to go hire a different limo company? Is that what you're I didn't me? say that. All right, then be quiet. I want the customer no, to be happy. You see how you're unapproachable? I tell you what I'm not happy with, and you're going, I'm going to quit. But you tell me I don't, ta- I don't carry my beeper, and I do carry my beeper. I said I can't reach you on your beeper many times. How you handle that information is up to you. You say, Mr. Stern. Are you reachable at all times? Listen, look at me. Oh, my God. I don't have to be reachable all times to you. <laughs> I, that's not my job to I be reachable you to, to you. I to be reachable to me. I don't have to be reachable to anybody. You have a responsibility to be reachable to your customers. And I take care of my responsibility. Sometimes I can't get you. I don't argue with me. I'm just giving you information. I, I want you to call your assistant and t- ask her. I don't want to ask her. Yeah, because you know I'm you're telling you get when I dial the number, I have to call her and say, I can't get a hold of Ronnie. You continue to keep trying. And she does. And eventually she gets a hold of you. But the fact of the matter is, this is information for you to process and, and make your business better. Or not. Or not. Obviously. I'm just telling you I can't reach you sometimes. Well, well, so why would you thing? then resign? I didn't say I resign. You're telling me to I'm go saying, hire Mike and start no, a new I'm limo so, company. I'm saying if you're not happy, you like Mike. You I like did. Mike. I do like Mike. He's so part of your limo like company. Me. Maybe you don't like me anymore. Did I maybe say I don't like you? You don't like me. Did I say I don't like you? Basically, yeah. Are you making this easy for me to tell you that your beeper sometimes is not reachable for me? Are you making it easy for me? No. You're, you're, you've made it so uncomfortable, <laughs> I can't tell you anything. If I tell you one thing, you make it a huge argument. If I tell you about the phone, you freak out. you got to calm yourself down. You're in business. Say like this, Mr. Stern, I understand your beeper. Are you having trouble with the beeper? Let me check into it. All right. That's all. I'll do a full investigation. That's, that's the way we'll, we'll be. That's the kind of relationship we'll have. Mr. Stern, and you can call me Mr. Mund. <laughs> no, I don't have to call you Mr. Mund. You work for me. You call me Mr. Stern. Larry, what is it? Yeah, good morning. Yeah, I'm a limousine driver from Westchester County, and I have to open up the doors for people, yes sir, no sir, and these people couldn't give a damn about me. If I ever talk to a client or a boss like Ronnie's talking to the great Howard Stern, Brian Cannon would be fired. You understand that? Right, all right. The point is that... The point is that if I tell you the phone doesn't work, or if I say I can't get in touch with the beeper... Maybe I'm wrong, but you do an investigation, that's all. All right, I'll check into it. That's all. That's it, that's your answer, not to yell and scream at me. I'll check into it, Mr. Stern. You come in here, what is this? I'm always available on my beeper. And you even admit that sometimes you don't take your beeper with you. So maybe I have some. I have a point here. It's not a reason to bail out and scream at me. The, re- the thing you do I'm is you say... I'm not bailing out. Right away, you're yelling at me. You don't like my service. You don't like me. You don't like well, you don't call me. I like Mike. It doesn't mean I don't like you. I didn't say that. I you didn't did say, say, you, I didn't I say, say you didn't like you me. You just said, if you like Mike, then that means you don't like me. You should go hire Mike. That doesn't, I'm not talking about no, you. What I'm, what I'm saying is maybe you're just not happy with me with, as far as the service I, Have anymore. I said I haven't been happy? I said I can't get a hold you of you on the beeper. Well, Gary, then, then I'm not happy. happy. Look, at, look at the difference between you and Gary. I said to Gary, Gary, I can't get you on your beeper. You know what Gary did? He, he internalized it and said, look, I do my job really well, but this is and one I think aspect. I do also. 
But this is one aspect that is bad. He can't get me on the beeper. You, on the other hand, if I say, I can't get you on the beeper, you go, all right, that's it. <laughs> that's it. What are you telling me? I don't carry my beeper. I carry well, my I beeper all carry, the time. So maybe and then I say to you, do you carry it on Sunday when you go for your drive? No, I don't. Well, so then you say, hey, wait a second. Maybe I'll... D you know what, Howard? I'm, you're not criticizing my whole business. You're criticizing the beeper. I'll carry my beeper on my Sunday drive. That's how you process information. That's how you get along with people. The idea that he's calling and he's frustrated that he's calling all these numbers and can't get a hold of you must mean he wants to get a hold of you. Now, Mike is so afraid to tell you the phone doesn't work. He'd there rather, must be a reason. He'd rather Howard be miserable with the phone than talk to you. Yeah. I'll say, oh, Mike, I can't stand this phone. I'm afraid to tell you about the phone. Mike's afraid to tell you about the phone. We're grown men, and wait, we're afraid wait, to tell I, you. I changed the phone two times. I don't know uh, what else to do. All right. For you. Well, maybe uh, the, did the was I right the last time that the I, wire was but broken? I, but I changed the phone two Listen times to me. already. Listen I don't know to what me. What else to do? Listen to me. The phone was working great, and then it stopped working great. And I said to you, "There's something wrong." You found out there was a wire broken, didn't you? So yeah, I wasn't yeah, crazy. Time, yeah. Is it possible a wire is broken the again? The first time there was nothing wrong with the phone, so they changed the phone anyway. All right. Anyway. Good. Good. And it was still the same. All right, so I okay, was wrong so the first time, right. and then the second time I was right. So you say like this, Howard likes my service, but the phone isn't working properly. I'll look into it. What's it cost me to look into it? Then you're done with it. You don't make World War Three out of the phone. I didn't make World War III. If I say I can't reach you in the beeper, you say, you know what? I thought that you right. could. Yeah, I'll look into could. it. I'll get a new beeper. I'll okay, a, if a that's the pro then there is a problem. Get a new beeper. I'll get a new beeper. Okay, go ahead. Now go and get your new beeper. Okay. All right. Go ahead. And apologize to John when you're out in the hall. Apologize to John? Because it's fun. Just go do it. All right. You ever hear a guy like this? He's angry. He's the angriest guy I know on the planet. Oh, my God. You should, Ronnie. I've always been good to you. I can't believe you came in here I screaming at me. <laughs> I've always been nice. I've, I've how about good how friends. about I'd walk out of here and give up the whole deal here, rather than apologize to you. Oh, Howard. How's that? Howard, please All right, there you go. Apologize, else can't work. <laughs> you guys go work it out. Go apologize, Ronnie. Mike, I'm in trouble. Well, you shouldn't be. You didn't do anything wrong. That's my point. Is he a good boss, Mike? Ronnie. Who? Ronnie? Don't even. Don't, well, I don't know which that. boss. Yeah, Ronnie's fine as long as everything's going good. There's nothing to tell him that's wrong. <laughs> as long as you don't have to talk to him. Exactly. Yeah, if you don't have to talk to him, everything's fine. Yeah, bring the car back, give him the keys, and run. <laughs> right for the hills. <laughs> All right, I'll see you. All right, Mikey. Uh, oh, God forbid I say I like Mike. Uh, Ronnie thinks that means he, I don't. He, you just. If I say. You, I, you hate him. Here's a guy who works in his company. I go, hey, I really like Mike. Oh, you like him? Yo, Mike? you like him. I'm gonna. F so maybe I should quit. Oh, you like Mike? <laughs> I like the guy. He's a great guy. Ever huh? since I said I like Mike, forget him. He, he's hated Mike. Forget him. Yeah. Got to get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get rid of everyone I like. <laughs> get guys I don't like. <laughs> you know, Ronnie's the opposite of a good businessman. <laughs> yeah, he's he's uh, he's unbelievable. <laughs> in character. I'm getting rid of everything he likes. Yeah. <laughs> I changed the phone twice. I don't know what to do. Yeah, with Mickey, you. go ahead. <laughs> Howard, yeah. I would give you a ride on my back to work every day with no shoes on and not complain about it. This guy's a... Oops. I don't want to say that. <laughs> rid of him. Tell him. All right. Yes, uh, well, that was comfortable. See, it's unbelievable what goes on every day. People are angry. People are angry. That's the lesson you've all learned. That's why there'll be no peace in the Middle East. But mostly they're angry at John. I know, I <laughs> he's never going to talk to me again. Or me. <laughs> oh, he'll talk to you again, but somehow John is like a lightning rod. <laughs> Well, because John observes things and tells me about them. But other people do that, too. It's John. Somehow, when John does it, people go crazy. I love John. <laughs> I love you, too, Bo. And There you go. They just go crazy. Everybody who comes in here goes, okay, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, let's take a break. <laughs> 
you go out and work out things with Ronnie. See if he's learned from what I taught him. See if he can. Is that what I should do? Should I go over and say, have you learned from Howard? No, just go over and say, are you all right? And he should be able to say, yes, I have my anger under control. <laughs> he's going to hit me. This is the new Ronnie. That's all. All right, we got to take a break. You realize all I said was, gee, sometimes I have trouble getting you on the beeper? Yeah. That's all it takes. So it's like slowly I turn. Now, you know, the guy's suicidal. Fire! Yeah, now he's ready to kill himself. Now he talked himself into a corner. Fire! Yeah, now he's selling his company. This is what I mean. He's selling his company. He's quitting. But he's... didn't he say in the conversation that he does sometimes not bring his beeper up? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm not a guy who complains either. You should see some of these ball buster clients that he used to have. Oh, I have somebody um, calling soon from uh, the Yankee Stadium mm -hmm. who says when uh, Rosie goes there, oh, the biggest pain in the ass. Oh, she's gonna call. I told her to call at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. Oh, she said it's, it's unbelievable. Really? But who is she yelling at? The limo driver? No, this is uh, a waitress. Uh oh, I, did I ever say you complain? Uh -oh, he's back. I never say you complain. You got to go calm down, man. Nobody can tell you anything. All I told you was I couldn't get you on the beeper sometimes. I don't think you Yeah, but I'm not even anything. talking about the beeper now. Now, every, all this stuff is coming out from under the carpet. Did you bring it out that I could, you know... Uh, did I, I say you complain? complained? I don't complain. When do I ever complain to you? I didn't say you complain. Never. What is, what who said I, Who said you complain? You just said it. I no, heard I it outside. No, I didn't. You're confused. You're confused. You better go. You better I'm go relax. You better go relax out there. You go. You go relax. <laughs> Look at you. You're a mess. <laughs> go to scores tonight. You go can't, see Lonnie. I can't. Go see Dr. I Lonnie. I can't go to scores. Well, do whatever you have to do to calm yourself down. Why can't you go to scores? Because yeah. it's Thursday night. I have to get up for work in the morning, like I do every day. You the never go to 16, scores during the week? Best over 16 years. Always there on time. <laughs> oh. He's looking at John. <laughs> Why don't you box John? <laughs> you wanna... more, more than I could say for you. <laughs> how many days have you been late? Hey, how many been... days have I been late? Ask him how many days I've been late and how many in seventeen almost seventeen. Zero. Days. Ask him. You're Zero days. He's, trying he's to been late. He's I have trying... to wait. I had to wait. Thing, him up. He's saying you're a good employee. Just he wishes. No, but now he's, now he's... Every once in a while. Yeah, you're he's you're going insane. This is your problem. <laughs> That's all he's saying, <laughs> Ron. <laughs> all I said is I can't reach you on your beeper. Sometimes you're turning it into World War Three. You're you're at war with everyone. <laughs> screaming at you for things you never even said. I know. Now he's screaming that he's on time every day. Who told him he wasn't? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> gee, you're on time every day. Congratulations. Oh, my goodness. You do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> I'm paying you. That's what you're supposed to do. What do you want? <laughs> See how he turns everything into a war? I, 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 this was amazing. He's crazy. He's got to get help. <laughs> think I'm angry. Is he seeing a shrink? Because you said that. Does your shrink no. have a partner? Because when he takes you, he should go to the other office. Oh, please. Jason, what is it? Hey, how you doing? I think I have an insight into Ronnie's behavior. What's that? That he's just really insecure. So anytime you give him any bit of criticism, he takes it as like the world's ending and he has to jump all over and get all defensive because he can't take it. Yeah, yeah. He gets, he gets, he gets upset. Even if I tell him Mike's good, he takes that as a negative. Right. It's all about well, him. I, mean, I go, hey, Ronnie, good call on Mike. He's a, he's a good driver. He's a good guy, a reliable guy. In other words, you don't like Oh, me. so you don't like me. <laughs> That's what you're I mean, really this is what I'm dealing with. I, I, I don't even know what to say. I sit back there and pray that nobody nobody says anything. It's just really insecure. You can't take it. I mean, you know, you tell no. somebody's good, that automatically means he's bad because you can't like two people at the same time. Right. I mean, capable. I go, hey, Mike's really good. Oh, you, you think I'm bad. Yeah. Uh, no, like I think Mike, huh? I think you did I guess a good. You don't like me anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mike's really good. That's it. I'm quitting. That's it. I, I, I swear to God. Okay, maybe you don't like me. Yeah. Mike does a good job. <clears throat> so you say you don't like the way I do. <laughs> and I'll go. No, I didn't say that. I'm just saying I think he's a good guy. Oh, but you like yeah, you him. Gotta put it you gotta what? Say, you did a good job by hiring Mike because he's a good guy. Yeah, I have to say. Ronnie, you did a good job hiring Mike. You know what? No, you got to do better than that. Mm. You got to say, if you can't drive me, it's okay if you let Mike drive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're first. <laughs> I need you behind the wheel first. But if you can't be there, it's okay, I guess, right. if Mike is there. Mike is all No, no, honey. Right. I love you, but yeah. I'm not looking at her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you, but you're, you, but but she's nice, too. You're my best friend, but Mike's my second best friend. Right, right. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, it's like with your chick, you know? Oh, honey, there's no I'm just looking yeah, at I'm, I'm not even looking. I love you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> if I if you can't drive me, I'd rather not be driven. I'd rather walk. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks, man. Hey, no problem. All right. Have a good one.
we got to take a break. My God, this went on way too long, but I had to settle it. It got well, crazy you in here. running in here. You couldn't just stop. It got nuts in here. Man needed an intervention. <laughs> He's so mad. He's not going to speak to me for like a year now. Well, mind you, I get him open door policy. It scores. I mean, this guy's got a whole life. Imagine I say, oh, well, I'm having trouble with the beeper. He starts yelling at me. Yelling. Top of his lungs. This is scary. <laughs> yes, Dominic. First of all, Ronnie's been the most loyal person uh, to you. Uh, here's another guy who he doesn't know, interpret things properly. Hey, I, got some, I got some Ronnie. gossip about you know, Dominic. You. What's your gossip? Okay, this John is, gr- is a little snitch. Uh, here's, here's this little is little the greatest now. gossip. This is the greatest Dominic gossip you know, ever. I, I, you know what, John? I'm going to tell you something. If Cabby doesn't beat the S out of you... I promise you, I'll do it. Oh, Dominic, oh, you can't even lift your arm. You except are except when you're feeling little, that face of yours. You're a little kiss ass. You're a little snitch. You tell every little thing to Howard. Good. Okay, well, here's and you don't? Oh, what do you do, Dominic? Dominic tells me everything about every one of everything that's uh, yeah, going right, on in his life. Full. And I'll tell you something else. Ronnie has been loyal, loving. Oh, shut up about yeah. Ronnie. Like, I don't like Ronnie. What did he do to Ronnie? Oh, yes, Dominic. Loving, he would put his life on the Dominic, are you field. talking about yourself or Ronnie? Ronnie. He yeah, yeah. Hey, you better Listen, you better get a grip on reality. Yeah, you better get a grip on being a human being. He would put his life on the line. Oh, be you. quiet, Dominic. Start talking about yourself, not Ronnie. Yeah, Ronnie would put his life. Remember the time that, that guy... Uh, you, know something, you know something, uh, Dominic? Don't even call here again, because... Oh, now you're not taking yeah, his calls on yeah, the air either. I hung up. Oh, my. He Dominic. knows I'm not talking about whether Ronnie's a good guy or not. I told yeah, him I can't get a touch of him point. on the beeper. Dominic misses the point. The whole point is Dominic's doing exactly what Ronnie did. Yeah. Blowing something out of proportion. That's right. Too bad he hung up because I, I had a good Dominic what story. What is the, the Dominic story? Do you, you remember which the, the one I told you? What? Uh, from a court insider. I, I got this from... Uh, I don't want to know unless he's on the phone. Uh, all, right. all right. We're going to be back right after these <laughs> words. <laughs> A couple of things. First of all, I said Artie was in here. Turns out Artie's sick, and we uh, just got a phone call from him back there, and uh, we'll be playing it for you in just a minute. Oh, wonderful. I mean, everybody knows exactly what happened. He's sick from this dieting contest because after gaining two pounds after the first week, I'm sure he went to the gym and worked out like a berserkowitz and went ahead and uh, got himself sick. Well, he had already overdone it on... Tuesday night when he was at the Yankee game. And out till 2 or 3 in the morning, he got two hours sleep. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to talk to him. Somebody has to help him. Yeah, I had lunch with him yesterday, and he ate well. He just had, like, you know, some, some turkey and, and hot peppers. But then he was on the way to the trainer. Yeah, I mean, so, first of all, the guy got... Turkey and hot peppers? Yeah, just, like, turkey slices and, and hot peppers. That's what he ate. <laughs> hot peppers? Isn't that covered in oil and stuff? No, it was okay. You know, for already it was like an you know, incredible. But uh, right. but he said he was on his way to his trainer, and I'm sure you know what is it? Uh, Naquam. Naquam, you know, worked him out like crazy. Yeah, I don't think Naquam understands. The guy had two hours sleep. <laughs> Why was he going? You know, he's the one who should have taken himself home to bed. Oh, please, that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> what are you dreaming? <laughs> Uh, so it, the diet is a disaster for Artie. He was fine and healthy before this. You know, I'll just Didn't give him have some a money. Day of sickness. Yeah, it's enough. I don't want. He's not allowed to play anymore. He also said. Uh, now he's ill. Well, he now says, he's missing work. He says his throat hurts, but the guy smokes like four packs a day. Yeah, but but of course he's sick. He's run down. He's, he's, he can't do even a little bit more than anything he's doing. He's out till two in the morning on a on a on a night where he's got to be up at four or five and drinking all night. I mean, you you forget he was throwing back Jack Daniels all night. <laughs> yeah. Now he's sick. Wait, wait, Jack Daniels shots of tequila. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, not only can he diet, I don't even think he can hang with his job. I mean, it requires tremendous discipline. <laughs> I mean, it's, it really does. It really does. Oh it was funny because he was telling me he's like I'll never be late. I'm because I'm at this. He was telling me how disciplined he is. Well, uh, you know, apparently everything's falling apart because a couple of weeks ago he said he didn't drink during the week because he wanted to be here for this job. Yeah, remember that one? Yeah, that's why I was shocked to see him guzzle the jack. I'm like, what happened? Yeah, what happened to that? <laughs> I don't drink during the week because I'm taking the job seriously. <laughs> hey, hey, the guy's out of control. Yeah, things are, are going wrong. Yeah, things are going horribly wrong. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Stuttering John has cut his hair off. He's got a crew cut preparing for his fight. With, I don't uh, know. Is this like a statement or something? No, it's just because uh, the long hair was getting in the way of the training. I see. 
Yeah, he said his hair would, when he would box, he'd wear that headgear, and his hair would swoop into his face. And oh, it was, no. It was handicapping him. And then, uh, like, a lot of time, I'd, I'd fling it up, and then I'd leave my chin wide open. Oh. Uh, mm. So, uh, you know, the, so the trainer, I, I already said I was going to do it, but the trainer said you should really cut your hair. Believe me, it, it looks better to me. You look clean. I think you should keep this. Yeah. Yeah, my wife likes it better, too. You look good, uh, amazingly. My kid didn't <laughs> recognize me after that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's just... It's better because your hair, when it's long, is greasy and dirty. It doesn't seem like you wash it that much. I do, though. But you do? It just looks unkempt and dirty and filthy, and it's not its not attractive, you know? <laughs> it's just not. You look better this way. You look cleaner. Like, you clean yourself. You look like you showered. You know what I mean? Yeah, it always, you always wondered about his hygiene. Oh, but I, I shower hair. every morning. Before. I know you do. <laughs> but you but just you look dirty. Dirty. You're like a stuttering Harrison Ford now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys look as good looking as always with the hair? Yeah. <laughs> it's Star Wars. <laughs> right. Oh, here's Artie with you. Hear him. <laughs> Artie. Artie. Yo. Uh. <laughs> Before the police are chasing Artie again. <laughs> I don't think it's you know? much longer. You don't say stuff like that, man. Artie. What? The reason you're sick is you can't go out in the middle of the working week. Right. Uh, you know, drink all night, eat like a pig, <laughs> stay up till 2 or 3 in the morning, and then come in here at 5 o'clock in the morning. I, I promise you I realize that. And then you can't... <laughs> and then you can't... Uh, you know, you, you can't go to the gym and work out like a maniac when you don't work out at all. Yeah. You know, especially... Especially a, after a night like that. Yeah, especially on two hours sleep. Go home and go to bed. Hey, what was... Uh, Artie, was it a really hard workout yesterday? Did he really, like, kick your ass? No. No. Actually, what happened was, after I left you, John, my good friend, Stuttering John... <laughs> who paid for lunch. Yeah. Wow. After after I left you, I went to meet the guy, Naquam... <laughs> And I went on that machine, that, what the hell, that elliptical thing? Right. Yeah. I did like 15 minutes on that, and then he said, okay, you seem tired, so we'll make it light today. So we only did like some sit-ups and stuff. And then he put me back on that elliptical thing for a half an hour. Yeah, well. <laughs> you should have gone home. You should have gone home and, and, and regrouped. I got back on that thing Artie. for a half an hour. Artie. The contest is over. And that, no, but then you're I out of to, it. We're expelling you from the contest. I went to bed at eight o'clock. I went to bed at eight o'clock. Yeah, but dude, you missed an entire night's sleep the night before. Did you forget? Right. No. And I, <laughs> I promise you that will never happen again. But you're out of the contest. Yeah, you're, you're out. I'm out. Yeah. yeah I mean, I got to take you out. You don't know enough to take us. You gained two pounds. <laughs> Yeah, it's over. That, that's a fact that I can't argue with. Yeah. But, you know, I'm telling you, I'm I'm not out of control. I had a cough. You know, I had a cough and a sore throat before the other night anyway. Remember? I, I, yeah, from your first workout. Right, right. <laughs> Maybe you should cut down the cigarettes, though. I don't smoke four packs of cigarettes a day. How oh. many? I mean, you know, I, I, I'm doing all right. I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I, don't, I drank one night before work. He sounds um, like he's 90 years old. He does. <laughs> he drank one night before he woke he, he had like 18 Jack Daniels, like friggin' 50 million tequila shots. Hey, it's funny because he says that he can't come to work today because he has to go to the doctor. Hmm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> For well, a cold. For a cold. I, I don't want to come on the radio and sound like this. I could, this is how I well, talk. What's yeah. the doctor going to do now? He's going to give me this uh, cough medicine. Yeah, the doctor's going to tell him to go to bed and sleep. Right. He's but coughing I, no more than he usually does. Right. <laughs> I call Gary. Where? Because I checked all my messages. I Gary, I called that that eight 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 thing. Oh, my beeper number? Yeah. Cause no, I, Gary never carries his beeper. No, I had it with me all night. Did you really? I was using, yeah, I had it with. I, had it right I beeped you on that a million times. I gave up. It never that's, works. That's not true at all. Uh, although sometimes I got to tell you. You never beat me on You're that. The, I, I used to years ago. I mean, or whenever you got it, you first got your beeper. I have it with me all the time. <laughs> I'm telling you, it never works. You well, never I, return I the calls. Of, I, get, I don't. It's not that I don't return the calls. I get, and a beeper is supposed to work no matter what. 
I get a lot of complaints that people say they beat me because you, you got to understand something. It's not a direct page. You got to speak to an operator. Oh, so get a regular. Oh, beeper. the operators. The well, problem. Well, this, this is a CBS company. This is what they use. Well, tell them it doesn't work and get a new one. I mean, it's ridiculous. Garrett, CBS. I would, I would okay. never just not come in without calling. At five thirty, I called that number and left a full message with that some chick. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, Artie. Good luck to you. Hey, man. Good luck at the doctor. Is Mama Lang coming over to take care of you <laughs> and decorate your apartment? No, this is all me, man. All right, bro. I, I'm sorry. All right, feel better. I'll see you tomorrow. Right. Hardy. <laughs> the worst is calling in sick to this show. I remember, you, you feel so guilty. Uh, well, he is guilty. He's guilty he of being silly. He did this silly. to himself. Yeah, I mean, you can't stay out till 2 in the morning and not expect to get sick because you got to, and then at least go home right after the show and get some sleep. Don't, don't go to your stupid workout after you ate 50 zillion slices right, of you've pizza. Already, you've gained two pounds yeah, after I'm, a week of dieting. Give it up. All right, Artie's out of the contest. <laughs> I mean, I'm taking him out because he can't take himself out. He refuses to believe right. that he can't he's, win this. There's no way he's going to win. <laughs> he went up two pounds. He went up two pounds. <laughs> I told my wife she couldn't believe it. She goes, no. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody said, oh, gee, I wanted to hear the weigh-in. What happened? I go, well, you know, everybody did pretty well, but Artie gained two pounds. <laughs> and they're like, how's that possible? I go, well, he did it. He gained two pounds. He's I can't a believe genius. Gary, 14 pounds. That's pretty good, man. I can't believe Gary lost 14 pounds and he looked fatter to me. <laughs> that was weird. Your body looked awful in that thong. <laughs> that was thong. Really? That's a thong. I know, but my God, your, your physique is, you used to have a pretty good shape. I'm still a good... 16, 18 pounds away from being where I need to be. I'm still, oh, yeah. you know. Man, it, I think maybe more. <laughs> you look terrible. You know what? You're, you you are, know what? Artie, Artie's out of shape as he is. Look better in the thong. You're, you're like really almost bizarre now with your eating habits and everything. I mean, you're almost like an anorexic. Well, fine, but at least, but I'm, at least I can get you. in a thong and look decent. So fine. Well, let's see you in a thong. I've been in one on the show. Hop up there. <laughs> I'll get in one. You want to hear I'm, I'm proud. <laughs> This is Artie. Can't make it to work today. I can't stop coughing, and my throat is really sore. I'm going to the doctor to get something so I can come in tomorrow. Can I ask you something? Why don't you get these messages? I have no idea. But, I mean, the, it, but what good is a beeper if no, no one can get you on it? I don't know what but this has been you. going on for years. No, it, Bro, no, not I'm, not, I'm not chilling out. I'm telling you, your beeper doesn't work. You're hard to get a hold of. Have, and I'll tell you the other guy whose beeper doesn't work. Who? Worse than Gary in my life. Ronnie the limo driver. His beeper doesn't work? No, whenever you need this guy in a pinch, you can't get a hold of him. And it's done intentionally because he doesn't want to be bothered. But if he's running a limo company and I need to, a limo at the last minute... He'd better be available. Be available some way. So you know what the weird thing is? It's uh, this. It Mr. Like beeper. And he, then he'll go, on the weekends, I don't carry my beeper. I'm all, oh. gee. That's what I might need you. Yeah, well, well, you can't be reached at your home. No, I'm not kidding at all. Your beeper doesn't work. It does, and you don't. You and you even say to me, "I don't carry it on that, weekends." That's not true. What are you kidding me? You got to have that thing on, man, twenty four seven. You want to run a company? Bottom line, bro, and don't come in here acting like you carry it with you. you don't. I carry. it. What are you talking about? No, nope. I'm telling you. Do you turn it off, Ronnie, when you just don't want to be bothered? John, shut up, all right? Tell the truth. Just shut up. Tell the truth what John is saying. John, tell John to shut up. I don't Why want to... I don't want, I'm not up. talking to John, all right? I'm I'm I am not talking John to John. John is a, a valued member of the John? show. Yeah, right. He yeah, is. he's valued. He knows. Yeah, he's Ronnie, valued. Shut up, John. John. Ronnie. Oh, Why should John shut up? <laughs> you don't keep your beeper on. That what bull the crap. hell was that? About. Shut up, Ask John. Ask it again, John. <laughs> right. Do you, do you, do you John, John. You don't want to be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> John, everywhere you go, you got to do the Stutter and John show. Let's 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 drop it. Do okay? you ever, do you ever right? turn it off? Do I ever turn it off? Yeah. No. That's a Never. lie. You're lying. No, that's not true. All right, you can true. leave now. Take it out. Let's see it right now. I, uh, right it's not on. What do you mean it's not John, on? John, check it. Go over there and check it. <laughs> it's on. No, it's not. It's on. What are you talking about? Whatever. Is that the same CBS company beeper? No, I wouldn't use that garbage. Yeah, you know, good time. Good <laughs> time to Neil. keep. Good I got time, this from Neil. Good time to keep it on while I'm with you. Right. What are you when I'm not what with are you, you keep you turn about? off. When did on you the ever... weekends, I try to get all the I can't. Oh, Laura always gets a hold of me. What are you talking about? All right, thank you. All right, we're done. What do you mean? Thank keep you. Keep your beeper on. Thank you. I'm done with you now. What do you want me to do? Carry this on? I'm. I have a disagreement with you. Come on, Ronnie. You, you never John. turn it off. <laughs> Do you turn it off or not? No. That's a lie. It's not a lie. That's on, a lie. No, it's Saturday not a lie. Saturday mornings when you're taking your drive, you have it on. Yeah, some, maybe I forget to take it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Come on. You can leave now. <laughs>
But I, if I don't have my beeper, I got my phone. Oh, God. Somebody's supposed to know no, 50 don't. numbers to get yeah, oh, oh, you don't know. There's 17 Ryan the limo driver numbers, <laughs> and none of them work. Oh, like like we we never take we don't take care of you, right? Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Oh, brother! All right, get out of here now. Yeah, I'll get out. Go ahead. Goodbye. Backup? Get out. Get out. Why would you irritate him? He's so dangerous. Well, he doesn't want to. Uh,